Hi, and welcome to another episode of Cast from BI. Today, another solo one. Today, we're going to talk about what to tell your security team. Many cases, and we've seen it all the time, Power BI starts at the department level. People are playing with Power BI. They love Power BI Desktop. They love the simplicity. They love the power that they have with Power BI, and they can do whatever they want. But at one point, you start sharing, you start showing a CIO dashboard, CFO is starting to ask questions, IT steps in and says, whoa, 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 what are you doing? What's, which data is going where? Uh, how secure is it? And today we're going to talk about what do you tell your security team in those cases? So with that, let's go to the episode. All right. So you are an organization, you started Power BI, but there are usually two factions in any organization. There's the business team who are doing things bottoms up, business led, very agile in distribution. And then there's IT, the centralized BI organization that is more tops down. It is IT hybrid led and governable and secure. That's the most important things. Now, how do we get these two to work together? Well, first of all, one of them is, and there's not, uh, we're not going to really talk about that today, but the center of excellence is really super important for those two to really work together and to get people to work on governable and secure data and things like this. What we're going to talk about today is, okay, what happens in that moment when IT starts to wake up and you want to be able to grow Power BI far further in your organization and not just for people um, in the department, but you want to share it with more people. But IT and they should are starting to worry about things like, okay, what about security? How do we make sure that no data is leaking? Who can see the data and who can see what data? What do we do about data sovereignty? Like we don't want to get subpoenaed as an organization that we're uh, violating uh, data sovereignty laws, uh, GDPR, uh, governance. There are so many questions that an IT organization has to uh, answer. And luckily, but a lot of the business users obviously have no clue because they just work in Power BI Desktop, they know DAX, they follow Guy in a Cube, and they know all there is about Power BI, but not necessarily about those security things. So luckily, Power BI actually has a lot of that stuff built in. Maybe not directly Power BI, but the Azure cloud around it, where Power BI is built upon, has a lot of those functionalities. And Power BI is fully integrated with them. There's networking security. We have data loss prevention. And Power BI has the most stringent security and compliance requirements uh, certifications. Over 105 plus compliance standards and certifications like HIPAA and, and things like this that Power BI is held upon a really high standard. And we need to make sure that those are are getting met. So there's lots of things happening under the covers that you don't see every day that are actually happening. Uh, Power BI has governance functionalities and features, and you have a full blown way to do data encryption. Okay. So let's dive a little bit into more details. So what are the, some of the things that you can do and tell your security team? So the first thing that a lot of organizations ask is, okay, okay. How can we make sure that the right people are signing up and they're doing the right things. Well, under the covers, when you sign up to Power BI or when you assign someone to Power BI, it automatically is hosted inside of Azure Active Directory. Okay, so your account is not a separate account into the Power BI service. No, you have an account in Azure Active Directory. And if your organization is has using more um, products from Microsoft, uh, Office is probably the most important one, uh, but also Dynamics and any other product in Microsoft, the clouds, they all rely on Azure Active Directory. And Azure Active, Active Directory is the central hub for all your security activities. Now, if you, for example, turn on multi-factor authentication, which is an easy thing to do, nothing to do with Power BI, just with Azure Active Directory. If you turn on multi-factor authentication, it is turned on for everything. And that's not just the end of it. There are many other functionalities and features inside of Azure Active Directory that make it a killer feature for your security team. For example, 
condition of access in Azure Active Directory is so amazing. If you want to really turn around what you can uh, secure, what you cannot secure. For example, you can say, I don't want my, co my workers in my organization um, to log on to Power BI when they're at home. I only want them to do it on their corporate devices. I only want to do it when they're in the office. I only want to do it when they have VPNs. I only want to do it uh, on their uh, corporate devices, but not on their personal devices. All of these things are possible with uh, conditional access. And you can even say, so, okay, I only want that for Power BI, but I do want, for example, Office or Exchange, they can log into that. So it's really conditional access that is really a key here. So AED has many amazing features that you can turn on or off for services, for example, for Power BI, the multi-factor authentication, uh, conditional access, uh, uh, things like this. So you can go to your security team and say, okay, in my organization, if you want to secure people who are logging into Power BI, you can go ahead and say, okay, so you can secure it with Azure Active Directory. Now, the next one is data at rest encryption. So by default, Power BI encrypts all his uh, data at rest, uh, but it's doing so by Microsoft keys, obviously. So we're encrypting the data, no one can get access to it, to the data at rest. Uh, but for some organizations, that is not enough. They want to be able to control their own credentials. They want to be able to control their own keys uh, so that they can, in case of a subpoena or something like this, they can revoke all the credentials and all the data will become inaccessible for anyone. So for this reason, Power BI supports bring your own key. And with bring your own key, you can have your own key in your own uh, premium capacity. And then all the data in that premium capacity is encrypted with your key. Again, this is a pretty heavy handed feature, but mandatory for some organizations. So we definitely need to make sure uh, that it's there. And then it's because of, otherwise they won't be able to use the cloud at all, but Power BI supports it. The downside obviously is if you lose your key, you're gonna be in back, big trouble because you won't be able to access data anymore. Obviously, it's not that easy to lose the key. Uh, there's Azure Key Vault where you can store your keys, you can rotate keys. Uh, there are many things that are possible here. But again, this is one of those items that if you're in a financial institute or something like this, a uh, law firm or whatever, this is key to getting trust for your IT department to use Power BI. Now, the next topic is network security. Again, a very big deal for some organizations too. They want to be able to make sure that the data is connected to in a secure location, uh, but even necessarily, not necessarily just that, but also Power BI only can be accessed through uh, a secure location and logged into a secure location. Obviously, if you ask me, I would probably steer them towards uh, conditional access only because conditional access kind of does the same thing. If you're not able to log in to Power BI from certain places or when you don't have the VPN, it kind of serves the same purpose. But for network security in Power BI itself, we have a lot of different features. First of all, there's a feature called private endpoints. And private endpoints allows you to connect to Power BI just from within a private endpoint. Again, this is pretty heavy handed too, because you need to really set up your whole environment to be able to, to make sure that you support private endpoints. And again, it's not just Power BI, it's many other Azure functionalities and features that support private endpoints. But your admin can go into Power BI and set it up as a private endpoint. And that moment, no one can reach Power BI outside of those private IP addresses anymore. But I mean, no one, right? So even when your admin has to do something, uh, when he's at home, you better make sure that you can access to do, get access to your private endpoint or set up a VM in Azure that is part of that private endpoint. So that's, again, pretty heavy handed, but it's available and it's possible because some organizations have really hard and stringent uh, security requirements. And the next one, also very interesting, is called service tags. Sometimes you want to open up IP addresses to just IP addresses of Power BI. So for example, in your Azure database or something like this, for that, we support service tags. And with service tags, you can pick, okay, open just to Power BI, 
and then we figure out under the covers because as you can imagine we're a cloud service your power bi instance tomorrow can be on a different ip address than it is today we keep switching it's SaaS, so we move things around all the time so connectivity can be ha happening from different ip addresses even when you do a refresh in gen 2 it happens on a different node so you have no clue where things are happening so service tags allow us to open up directly against uh, the Power BI IP addresses and endpoints. Now, that also brings us to the last one, and that is called VNet support. So Power BI has uh, almost, it's in preview today, uh, VNet support. And with VNet support, you, are, you can connect to data in Azure that is sitting inside of a VNet. So you go to Azure and you say, okay, my data lake can only be accessed by other people inside of the VNet. VNet is a pretty uh, complex networking uh, topology, but what it, in, in short, it means you can only access machines or uh, services that are running inside of the same VNet in the same IP, net, IP range that you are also in. So if you put your uh, Synapse environment and your data lake into the VNet, Power BI will not be able to reach it because Power BI is not part of this VNet. There's a new uh, feature, uh, it's currently in, in, in preview, uh, that allows us to create a managed gateway, we manage a gateway into that VNet. So from that moment on, you can connect to data inside of that VNet through that data, data gateway. Today it's a limited capacity, so you will not be able to run very heavy queries and things like this. So until that moment, you can also run your own gateway. So you spin up a gateway uh, in a v VM that is sitting inside of that VNet that's connected to Power BI. From that moment on, that gateway will be able to connect to your data sources and through the gateway, it pierces through the VNet and goes into Power BI. All right, so we have private endpoints. If you really want to control who can access Power BI, we have service tags, which allows you to say, okay, um, this is, these are the IP address for Power BI and I open up my IP address range. And VNet is the one level more is where you completely enclose everything off to only be, have access to anyone in the VNet. Power BI supports all of these. So that's network security. The next one is data resi residency. Again, this is an important one. If you're a big organization and you have work uh, employees or offices in different countries, for example, you have an office in Germany, and you have an office in the US and you have an office in the UK, you don't want your customer information to leave uh, that region. So your customers in Germany, they want to keep their data in Germany. For that reason, you are actually able to create a Power BI Premium instance inside of that region. And everything that is stored inside of that region uh, will not leave the region. So <clears throat> even when someone looks at data coming from the US, um, he will be able, obviously, to go to the internet and look at the data, uh, but only he sees the reports rendered outside, but the data is actually stored inside of that particular region. So that's very important too. Uh, there's also some gains on performance when you are in multi-geo. So for example, for your users and your, and your, your users that are, are in Germany, they don't have to go round trip all the way to the US. Usually it's not really a problem, but with some customers' networks, we have seen that um, MultiGeo actually does help them. And especially in, when you go to places where there's lower uh, bandwidth available. And for example, where I'm in the Netherlands, for me, I have a direct connection to the Amsterdam data center that connects directly to the US. So even though my Power BI instance is, is running in, in, in probably around Seattle, uh, it's super fast. I never have any problems. But if you are in Indonesia and you're sitting somewhere where the internet connection is less direct and you need more hops throughout the internet and you have to go all the way to the US, things might get be slower. So it, they definitely would, would pay by less hops and putting in a, a, an instance more closer to the users. All right. So that's multi geo. Now, the other thing that they really care about is auditability, right? What happened? Who has access to what? So there's two things here. 
First, you have auditability, what happened in the past. For this, we have auditing logs. And the auditing logs are currently being, there's two ways to get to auditing logs. One is you can go to Office 365 and use all the Office 365 auditing logs and Power BI is part of it. So you can go to the Office 365 uh, uh, admin center, go to the logging environment and there you can see a list of all uh, the actions that have happened. And you can see things like data set created, report created, report deleted, views. So everything is there. So, but the problem obviously with this is because it's part of Office 365, you need to be able to uh, have access. And sometimes the BI team is not the same as the Office team and it's not that easy. So for this reason, there's a second way to be able to get access to the same data and that is through the APIs. Well, in Office, you can also get access to the Office APIs, but again, you need to have the same credentials. But you can also directly go as a Power BI admin, you have this APIs that give you access to the same auditing information, and you can get them out and put them into a blob storage or ADLS Gen 2 or a SQL database. And then you can again see all the auditing logs that are available. Now, that's auditing, that is after the fact. Uh, you can see what have happened, who has seen which data and uh, who's created data sets and everything is in there. The second part of this is who has access to what. And that is a recent API that has been released where you can actually go ahead and see who has access to what. It just iterates over all the reports and dashboards and, and gives it you the list of people who have access to it, who can see the reports and uh, not necessarily have done anything with it, but they do have access. So again, this allows you to do uh, more of a governance on top of it. So you can see, okay, they've created this data set, but who has access to it? And immediately you can go ahead and investigate. So auditability, uh, auditing logs, and through APIs, there are much, they're starting to get more and more possible. That kind of ties into the next step because there's auditing logs. And again, auditing is after the fact, right? So someone, you want to see what has happened, but sometimes you want to govern and you want to see, okay, we have this data set who has access. So we have APIs for that. But if you want to take a step deeper and say, okay, I have data here in this SQL Azure database. What is the, where did it go? Which data sets are built upon this, on this model? For this, we have, again, two things. We have our own Power BI lineage. So you can go into lineage and you can see from a data set which uh, data source did it come from. Those are also available in APIs. So you can go ahead and see, okay, what APIs, what data sets, which data sources do they have? And you can make your own store out of it and then search through it. So there's a ton of APIs. And now with the coming of Purview and the integration of Purview, Azure Purview, we'll talk more about this in the next episode of Cash from BI uh, with Wolfgang Strasser. Um, but with Purview integration, you are actually able to see your whole Azure estate because Purview allows you to crawl all the data source that you have in Power BI. It allows you to crawl Power BI, which data sets are there, which reports are there, uh, which data source do they have? But Power BI stops at that point, point because it doesn't know anymore. Like it doesn't know further than the data source. It doesn't know more. But Azure Purview has access to everything. So it can crawl your Azure database and it can see, okay, what, what, which ADF package did it run? Where did the data come from? Maybe it came from data uh, lake storage. So you can tie everything together. And then together with auditability, you can go ahead and say, okay, so I have this file that I found in my organization that is not supposed to be there. Who has used this file? What, what it was, was it used for? You can go in purview and you can see the full end to end. Okay. It's been built right uh, on this data set has been built on top of it. These reports are building, being built on top of it. And then in the Power BI side of the things, you can see, okay, who all these people had access to it. And then potentially you can go ahead in the auditing log, see, okay, who has actually accessed this, these reports. So. It's a lot to think about, but everything is possible like this in Power BI. Uh, the one thing that I do want to mention is if you want full auditability with Power BI, you do need to turn on the auditing logs. 
um, they're not always there. And the second thing, that is, which is very important, is there's a limited time range. I think it's the only 30 days. So if you want longer than that, you have to go with the APIs and store them in some sort of a storage somewhere else. Okay? Now, uh, the last thing that I really want to talk about is data loss prevention. That's another important area. Like, okay, you want to make sure that your data doesn't leave the environment. So what is it that you can do with Power BI? There's, a, again, a couple of things. Um, we fully integrate with the management information protection labels uh, from uh, management information protection. And these labels allow you to say, okay, I have a Power BI desktop file here. Um, I, I make it mandatory for my users inside of my organization to pick what, um, how secure this needs to be, how uh, private is this. Um, and then you can go and say, oh, well, this is highly confidential. What sensitivity is it? Uh, that's the word I was searching for. What sensitivity is it? And if it's highly sensitive, there are rules that start to apply. For example, if I have a highly sensitive Power BI desktop file uh, that contains customer information, something like this, and for some reason I have put it on my USB stick and I forgot it on the train. Can happen the worst, right? But the good thing is when someone finds that USB stick and puts it into his machine and opens up Power BI desktop, he will not be able to see it because he has not the rights to log in because you've set up these rules and these credentials. Um, again, this is the same management information protection which you have probably seen from Office. Like uh, here at Microsoft, we have them too, on our Word files, on our PowerPoint files, uh, Excel files, all of these things. And they actually follow through. So if you have an Excel file that is highly sensitive, you connect to Power BI, you import the data into Power BI because you have access. Power BI automatically becomes highly sensitive too. So it travels. So that's really cool. Management information protection really allows you to say, okay, um, we want to control the sensitivity. We want to control the data as it is locked inside of our organization. And we want to make sure it doesn't traverse out of the organization. Now, um, one note here, and that actually goes with some of the others too, like purview integration, management information protection. As, um, you do need to have some other services agreements too, like management informa information protection. Power BI integrates with it but it doesn't come with it. The license doesn't come with it. So you need to get a separate license for it. I usually, the most organizations I've seen, they actually have that license already because they are working on it with Office. Because Office has the same rules and the same licenses and you can actually, we adhere to them. So it automatically flows through. But again, it is something to keep an eye out is, okay, you, we have all these functionalities, but not everything is built inside of uh, Power BI licensing wise let's put it that way all right and so that's it so that's what you can tell your security team now they might have way more questions than you want to answer or you can answer there's a security white paper available and i'll put the link in the description there's a security white paper that goes in really deep on actually how things work how do you log in and what happens when you log in which services does it go how is data stored inside of the power bi service it goes into many details on the questions that your security team might have. If you really start digging deep with InfoSec teams, you have lots of questions. Um, hopefully the Power BI uh, security white paper helps you answer those. Again, I'll put them in the link below. Uh, I also did a separate security discussion a session. It's on my channel. Uh, that is an hour long talking in more in depth about, okay, how does security in Power BI work? So your business unit, you love Power BI, one point, your I, the growth is stuck, right? You start sharing your dashboards with the CFO, the CIO. Immediately, people start asking questions like, where's the data come from? Is it secure? Uh, what about GDPR? How can we make sure that the data is, uh, where the data comes from? Uh, how do we make sure the data is not getting lost? I hopefully have given you some answers on what are some of the answers that you can have. And if you're running a Power BI service, Maybe some of these things are interesting to take a look into. Like, okay, maybe these things are, uh, you don't have them installed yet in your organization. Better safe than sorry. So but it's good to have a plan so that you, in the end, can go ahead back to your security team and say, guys, we have all of these things. Um, 
we're good to go. Power BI is secure. It's governed. Uh, we have a plan for all of these things. So with that, I want to thank you for your time. I hope this was enjoyable. I hope this was interesting. Uh, as I said before, hopefully the next episode will be on more details talking about purview and data governance. We won't talk about all the network security and all of that stuff. We will definitely talk about the uh, data governance side of the things. And with that, I wish you a good day.